Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the engagement letter as part of the audit planning. Both the client and the CPA firm must have a clear understanding of the engagement term. Exactly what are we doing, what are we responsible for as auditors, and what is management responsible for. Matter of fact, auditing standard mandate you have to have an engagement letter spelling out the objective of the audit, the responsibilities of both management and the auditor, the financial reporting framework, how are we conducting this audit, the expected audit report format, and any limitation. Now, for publicly traded companies, you know, the Sarbanes-Oxley mandate that the audit committee to enhance independence hires the auditor, not management. For private companies, management typically signs the engagement letter. Now, the engagement letter might include other services, such as tax services, management consulting, as long as it's allowed by the professional con code of conduct and regulations. Of course, there should be no conflict of interest or independence issue. The letter should also specify audit restrictions, if there's any restrictions, any deadlines, client assistance in obtaining record. What are you going to be giving us? What are you going to be providing for us? Are you going to make your staff available? And auditor required schedules, like what are we looking for from the client? What, what schedules are we looking for? We also would include the fees, how much we're going to charge the client. So this way there are no surprises at the end. Also, the letter tells the client that the auditor cannot guarantee discovering all instances of fraud. And that's always a limitation and we have to explain why. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over an engagement letter, section by section, basically showing you what would it look like. This way you have a good feeling about what is an engagement letter, what it could encompass. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So first, the engagement letter might have an introduction. It treats something like, we, you have requested that we audited the financial statement and you list which financial statement of Adam Company for a particular year. You would list the statements. Two, we are pleased that to confirm that we accepted this engagement. This letter confirms this. Then we need to talk about the objective of the engagement as well as we're only providing reasonable assurance. Here, the objective of our audit is to provide only reasonable assurance whether the financial statement are free from material errors or fraud. Now, reasonable assurance. What's reasonable assurance? Well, we, we talked about this when we discussed the audit report. So reasonable assurance is an important concept in auditing. It's the highest level of assurance, but not absolute assurance. Many reasons why we cannot give absolute assurance. We discussed this in prior session. One of them is we sample. We don't, we don't audit everything. Our audit will be conducted according to the US gas and misstatement can arise from both fraud or error. Now, we also have to explain what is fraud versus what is an error. We have to explain this. So, standards to follow, gas. And when we follow gas, we exercise professional judgment and we maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risk of material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. Again, we have to also explain the difference between fraud and error and why fraud is harder to detect. That's always the case because fraud people try to hide their tracks. An error, usually when someone makes an error, by its nature, they don't make an attempt to hide it versus fraud, they do so. Okay, and we're going to obtain enough sufficient appropriate evidence to provide basis for our opinion. The risk of not detecting a material misstatement resulting from fraud is higher and we talked about this. Also, we need to talk about who's responsible for the internal control, accounting policies, and we will assess going concern. Obtaining an understanding of the internal control relevant to the audit in order to design audit procedures. So the only reason we are learning about internal control is to help us in our planning for the audit. 
but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the entity's internal control, unless we are engaged to do so. However, we will communicate to you in writing concerning any significant deficiencies or material weakness in internal control. And we'll talk about significant deficiencies and material weakness, the difference between them when we discuss internal control. Also, we need to let them know that we evaluate, we evaluate, it means we review the appropriateness of accounting policies used and reasonableness of significant accounting estimate made by management. Management set up the accounting policies. Management make the estimates, we review as well as the overall presentation of the financial statements, including the disclosure, and whether these financial statements represent the underlying transaction and event in a, manner, in a manner that achieve fair presentation. Also, we're gonna be looking at the going concern to see if the company is a going concern as well. Also, we have to mention what we called inherent limitation. Because of the inherent limitation of an audit, together with the inherent limitation, an unavoidable risk that some material misstatements may not be detected that's always the case. Why? We could make a mistake. Maybe the sampling that we selected was not representative. Maybe if it was representative, we misinterpret the results. This could happen even if we planned the audit properly and we performed the audit according to gas. We could still make a mistake. This is what we are saying. We also have to get some form of a management acknowledgement. What management needs to acknowledge? Well, our audit will be conducted on the basis that management acknowledge and understand that they have the responsibility of preparing the financial statements. It's their responsibilities according to GAAP. Also, they are responsible for the design, implementation, and maintenance of internal control. So when it comes to financial statements and internal control, we are not responsible for those. Management is responsible for those. Also, management is responsible to providing us, to giving us access to all information which management is aware that's relevant to the preparation and fair presentation, such as records, documentation, and other matters. Give, provide us the information to make a decision. Also, information that we might request from management for the purpose of the audit. And if we ask for something, we expect that you give it to us. Also, unrestricted access to people, to talk to people, from whom we determine it's necessary to obtain audit evidence. So give us access to records, Documents also access to people to be able to talk to people. Also in the, in the engagement letter, we would list the fee as part of our audit process. We would request from management written confirmation concerning representation. So everything that they told us here, we need a representation letter for. Also, our fee will be billed as the work progresses and are based on the amount of time required. And we just basically let them know what the amount expected to be. We will issue a written report. This is the final product upon the completion of our audit of the financial statement of Adam Company. And we will give this report to the board of directors. At the end, we just kind of wrap it up. Depending on the nature of these circumstances, it might be necessary for us to modify our opinion, add an emphasis of a matter paragraph or other matter paragraph to the auditor's report. We have to let them know that's a possibility, the different type of report. At the end, we're, we're going to ask them to sign. Please sign and return the attached copy of this letter to indicate your acknowledgement. And that's that. That's that's a sample of an engagement letter. You want to make sure you know what, what goes there. What goes there? What goes there is understanding between the auditor and the responsibility. What's the auditor responsibility? What's management responsibility? You need to be aware of what is management is responsible for, which is mainly financial, not mainly financial statements and internal control. Auditor is providing reasonable assurance. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, complete additional MCQs, true false questions that's gonna help you whether you are an accounting student or CPA exam candidate. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.